Got it to your left, Michael Richard. I'm curious whether you fish Kokanee because, as far as I know, you're the only kayak guide, full time kayak guide in the Pacific Northwest. One of the very few on the West Coast. There are some in California, which is kind of you know sort of like the West Coast central of kayak fishing. But you're make you're 365 days a year. You're out there with the plastic boat doing this whole thing. You're doing everything from sturgeon to to trout. I mean, if it swims, you're fishing for it in a kayak, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, we're part of the the plastic hatch. They're calling us. You right, know, and right. you see a lot more of us plastic boats on the Absolutely. water. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything from kokanee uh, springers. You'll see us out in Astoria. You know, come come summer and moving up the Columbia system all the way up to the Klickitat in the you know in the fall. So. So yeah, it's uh, Lake Merwin. A lot of opportunity um, to get out. It's just another another way to get on the water. This so. is another one of those uh, sections of the sport fishing uh, population here in this part of the country that that's growing quickly. Dell, you were part of a of a tuna experience with 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 the plastic boat crew. So I mean, oh, yeah. they literally can go almost anywhere. I mean, this, this whole this whole thing that we're talking about with with Michael and his buddies is is, is I mean, it is, it is a kind of a universal deal for every fishery up here. Oh yeah. We loaded them up on the Hydra Sport and took them 40 miles offshore and, you know, so they could tangle with a tuna. I'd like to do that. <laughs> Sign me I, up. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if they make a 42-foot <laughs> kayak. Hey. But, I mean, I mean we'll have to ask I can President be a Hobie about that. somebody that does, <laughs> yeah, though. Right. Big man kayak. Right, so you're fishing, out of, a, you're fishing out, of a, out of a Hobie. And uh, I've had a chance to, I mean, this whole kayak thing I've had a chance to do the last year and a half or so, so it's, it's really super cool. But Hobie is obviously it's the most well-known name in the industry and it's 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 the gear you've got you've got the drive which which means you don't have to paddle. I mean one translate this for, for people who don't know this. Normally if you're fishing out of a kayak you gotta paddle. But not so. Not so with, with the boats that you're fishing out of. Right, exactly. Most when most people think of uh, a kayaks and kayak fishing, they think of a whitewater kayak. The big change that's happened lately is is uh, we have what's called a sit on kayak. So we're basically sitting up above the kayak. We're not sitting inside of the of the cockpit of the kayak. So there's air between us and the water. Um, but what the, the Hobie has that nobody else has is the Mirage Drive. So we're actually using our feet to push ourselves through the water. We have a, you know, a, a, a adjustment on the left that turns a basically mm -hmm. turns a rudder. It's a rudder, yep. But it allows us to have our hands free to hold a fishing pole and focus on fishing instead of, you know, having a paddle in our hands and, and you know, trying to paddle and then fish and, and, you know, alternate between a paddle and a fishing pole. I gotta, I gotta say that that the experience of of fishing from a craft like that changes the way that you fish because you can't take a darn thing for granted. I mean, I'm talking about it, the slightest puff of wind changes <laughs> everything that you're trying to do. No kidding. I mean, I I've fished mm -hmm. on super, fl I mean, places that are as flat as this table, but the slightest puff of wind comes and everything. Your whole plan goes out the window. You have yeah. to adjust to everything. You'd be surprised. I mean, the, the design of the bottom of these kayaks, there's a, there's a keel that actually runs through the bottom of the kayak. So it's not completely flat on bottom. So it, they actually track really well across, you know, I've been on lakes before, you know, fishing and had a 15, 10, you know, 10, 15 mile an hour wind kick up. And it's amazing how we can just kind of turn into that wind and pedal and, and we boogie right through it. I mean, these Hobie kayaks do five miles an hour and... Even in a 15 mile an hour wind, I can still track four miles an hour, because we're a you know we're a small we're sure. not big we don't right. have a right. a lot of space you know surface area above the water to to slow us down so right right it's pretty but, cool uh, yeah besides uh, with Dale you know that's called mother shipping where we actually yeah. jump on a big boat and head out and that's mm -hmm. pretty much the only type of fishery that we can't get to on our own as the tuna 50 grounds. 50 miles out is a long yeah. ride. That's a long paddle. I don't, exactly. I don't care what the Mirage Drive does for you. That's a long ways. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <I> mean, <laughs> from everything yeah. from Turbo you know, Mirage. The, yeah. the Columbia River, the ocean, we do a yep. lot of, we launch out of Pacific City and right. Depot Bay, a lot of rock fishing, trolling for salmon out in the ocean, uh, and then all the way up the Columbia, the Willamette, into the Clackamas, do a lot of steelhead fishing this time of year. You know, and everyone asks, well, what do you do with that Mirage Drive? I mean, you're going to be banging rocks because it does, it does hang a foot and a half below the boat. But all you got to do is push one foot forward, and it scissors the, the fins up underneath the kayak so I can still skim through, you know, three inches of water. It's real simple, too. If you want to, you can just pull it out. I mean, and the whole yeah. thing is it, until you've done it, and, and I would urge people to go take a look at these things because until you've actually had a chance to sit in them and understand how user-friendly and functional these things are, you have, you have no clue. I mean, it's really, it makes it about as easy as it's going to get. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So when we move down the table to the end here, so Dell, we have the dates 
for the 2015 Oregon Tuna Classic, which which the 14 version was was insanely cool, 10th anniversary. So, all right, so we've got Captain Diversity here, Michael. You <laughs> fish for everything, literally everything. So, so where would you most like to take take the Hobie? You don't even have to take the Hobie if you don't want to, but I, you kayak guys, being the way you are, you have to take the plastic boats everywhere. So where where would you most like to put the Hobie that you've not been? You know, I'm, I'm going to switch it up here last minute. I was going to go with uh, Henry's Fork in Henry's Lake, and instead I'm going to switch it up to Nia Bay for hell of it. You're, but you're Bucket. basically a bobber, you know. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> I want a halibut. That's the one the one species that I'm still chasing is a, is a halibut in the kayak. Well, you really don't have to go very deep to get those. People think halibut, they think, oh, you know, 16 to 24 ounces of lead, giant baits, 700 feet of water. You don't have to do that in the springtime. I've been a uh, victim of this, I want to say, uh, half a dozen times. 40 to 50 feet of water, you can get a halibut bigger than, I promise you, you cannot fit in your little Hobie. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the interesting I wanna, part. I want to see a 70 or 80 pounder with, with you and just maybe videotape you and put you on YouTube. It'd be very entertaining. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. so recently, photos of you with, with Sturgeon. I mean, this is, I mean, and Cody's done this with yeah. you. It's not out, yeah. to, I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm friends in Florida who have caught, I mean, giant fish out of these things. So the halibut is... I mean, it's. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a big task, but it's, it's, big it's not it's not undoable though. <laughs> yeah, now in the in the kayaks in, in, in species like a sturgeon and halibut, you know, you're basically pulling them straight up. So believe it or not, it's it's not as uh, unstable as one would think. It's very, it's 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 not too bad. I mean, just just this last Friday, I caught a, a seven foot sturgeon in uh, the Willamette River, and uh, it took me about 40 minutes to get it up to the boat. You know, pet its belly, say thank you, and send it on its way. But, you know, it's it's definitely doable. And so, Dell, you've had some experience with uh, with this offshore thing with.